Witch Trials Weekly, Video 21, June the 3rd to June the 9th, 1692. Can one be a witch and not know it? Welcome to this week's edition of Witch Trials Weekly. The grand jury heard evidence against John Willard and Rebecca Nurse, while others testified in favor of Elizabeth Howe. Warrants for Elizabeth Payne and Elizabeth Fosdick were issued. Elizabeth Payne had been the center of turbulence before as a midwife and a gossip. She was accused, but not found guilty, of public drunkenness and composing body verses against a Reverend Wigglesworth. Elizabeth Fosdick was arrested for bewitching one of Peter Tuff's slaves. Judges Gedney, Hawthorne, and Corwin presided over the examination of Job Tukey, who was held for trial. These three judges also presided over the examination of Mary Ireson and Simon Willard took notes. As a test, the court presented Mary's sister to the afflicted, asking if she was the one who hurt them. They said no, and then correctly identified Mary. She admitted that she had been in a bad temper and maybe that sin made her vulnerable, but she was not a witch. Touch test was tried successfully several times. She asked if she could be a witch and not know it. The magistrates told her no and she was held for trial. Anne Dolliver was arrested as well. She was living in Salem with her father, Reverend John Higginson, whose house supposedly once stood where our museum is now. For more information on this, please reference Sidney Purley's Salem in 1700, number 15, Essex Antiquarian, volume 8. Anne had married William Dolliver about 10 years earlier, and he had spent most of her money before abandoning her and their children. Reverend Higginson said his daughter was ruled by overbearing melancholy, crazed in her understanding. Some neighbors were against her while others defended her. When asked if she ever performed witchcraft, she said, not with intent to hurt anybody. She didn't say any more, but rather asked, where are my accusers? I am not willing to accuse myself. She admitted she stayed in the woods one night because she was too faint to make it home. She also said, as many before her had, that the devil could take the form of any man. She admitted to having two wax poppets for use for counter magic when she thought herself bewitched 14 years earlier. She was jailed and held for trial. On June 8th, at the first meeting of the General Court of Boston since the new charter, William Stoughton signed and sealed Bridget Bishop's death warrant. Nathaniel Saltonsall resigned from the court of Oyer and Terminer. The girls would soon start seeing his specter. This video was produced with special permission from the author, Marilyn K. Roach, and publisher, Cooper Square Press. The Salem Witch Trials, a day-by-day -day chronicle of a community under siege, covers the years 1692 to 1697 in detail. It also touches briefly on important and relevant events before and after this time. We are proud to carry all of Ms. Roach's books and publications in our museum store. To get a copy for your personal research and enjoyment, please visit www.salemwitchmuseum.com.